When I was quite young, my father had one of the first telephones in our neighborhood. I remember well the polished, old case fastened to the wall. The shiny receiver hung on the side of the box. Information please, could supply anybody's number and the correct time. My first personal experience with this genie underscore and underscore the underscore bottle came one day while my mother was visiting a neighbor. The telephone. Quickly, I ran for the footstool in the parlor and dragged it to the landing. Climbing up, I unhooked the receiver in the parlor and held it to my ear. Information please, I said into the mouthpiece just above my head. A click or two and a small clear voice spoke into my ear. Nobody's home but me, I blubbered. Are you bleeding? The voice asked. No, I replied. I hit my finger with the hammer and it hurts. Can you open your ice box? She asked. I said I could. Then chip off a little piece of ice and hold it to your finger, said the voice. Then, there was the time Petty, our pet canary died. I called, information please, and told her the sad story. She listened, then said the usual things grown-ups say to soothe a child. But I was unconsoled. I asked her, why is it that birds should sing so beautiful and bring joy to all families, only to end up as a heap of feathers on the bottom of a cage? Another day I was on the telephone. Information please. Information, said the now familiar voice. How do you spell fix? I asked. All this took place in a small town in the Pacific Northwest. As I grew into my teens, the memories of those childhood conversations never really left me. Often, in moments of doubt and perplexity I would recall the serene sense of security I had then. I appreciated now how patient, understanding, and kind she was to have spent her time on a little boy. Then, without thinking what I was doing, I dialed my hometown operator and said, Information, please. Miraculously, I heard the small, clear voice I knew so well. Information. I laughed, so it's really still you, I said. I wonder if you have any idea how much you meant to me during the time. I wonder, she said, if you know how much your calls meant to me. I never had any children and I used to look forward to your calls. I asked for Sally. Are you a friend? She said. Yes, a very old friend, I answered. I'm sorry to have to tell you this, she said. Sally had been working part-time the last few years because she was sick. She died five weeks ago. Before I could hang up she said, wait a minute. Did you say your name was Paul? Yes. Well, Sally left a message for you. She wrote it down in case you called. Let me read it to you. The note said, tell him I still say there are other worlds to sing in. He'll know what I mean. I thanked her and hung up. I knew what Sally meant. Moral. Never underestimate the impression you may make on others.